Навальний is beaten, Владимир Карамурза sentenced to 25 years in prison, Evan Gershkovich was arrested. This is what we're going to talk about today. Uh, this man is Vladimir Karamurza. We will talk about him more closely. Hi, I'm Elina, and this is my political channel Enough. Welcome to my channel. He is we fighting propaganda, and I telling people the truth about the war in Ukraine, and many other things about the situation in Russia. Uh, I have lived in Russia and USSR, and I'm living over 18 years in Canada now. So we will discuss many of things in our channel and in, in my channel I am the only one who created it and who operating it. And more information about me in the playlist which called about me. Today we will talk about a huge sentence received by uh, Vladimir Karamurza. He is on the picture. And this is his lawyer, Vadim Prokhorov. Why he's important to us, why we need to know about him, uh, you will find out in a minute. Vladimir Karamurza is a Russian political activist, journalist, author, and filmmaker and political prisoner, which just yesterday received huge sentence, uh, bigger than even in Stalin time political prisoners received, 25 years, quarter of a century in jail and it just outrageous uh, mr karamurza is a political activist who actually was awarded with Václav havel humor human rights prize and he's a senior fellow in raul wallenberg center for human rights based in montreal and uh, also he created two documentaries they choose freedom and Nemtsov about another Russian famous opposition leader who was murdered in Moscow uh, years ago. Uh, Mr. Karamurza graduated from Cambridge. And uh, this is in general what I can shortly tell you about him. The footage I'm showing you is uh, from either this one is from TV Rain and previous uh, pictures were from uh, popular politics. Uh, so, uh, that site's uh, popular politics created by uh, Russian oppositional leader Alexei Navalny, which we will talk about him a little later. So let's see what uh, the lawyer of Mr. Karamurza has to say. В принципе, суд расписал, что там три за нежелательность, семь за, значит, вот по статье 207.3, якобы, якобы фейки в отношении российской армии, 18 лет за... Uh -huh. uh, basically, there were three reasons, so-called reasons, why he was sentenced. It's uh, because he was part of an uh, undesirable organization, uh, working with undesirable organization in Russia, uh, because of uh, which he got like three years for that. Another one was uh, about spreading fakes about Russian army. Seven years he got for so-called fakes about Russian army, for telling the truth about Russian army, and the rest of the sentences from, for the uh, state treason, treason against the state. There are no law in Russia anymore. We will talk about Navalny. Uh, at least in Soviet time, not like Stalin times, when they also didn't have a law, they just grabbed people and put them for 10 years in jail for basically uh being against stalin and they called them traitors of the nations and so political prisoners had minimum 10 years in jail karamurza got 25 and why because of because they wanted to at least in the situation with navalny they had to pretend that navalny committed some sort of a crime uh they kind of put an idea uh, in the court they kind of pretend it was some sort of a case of white collar crime or something like that something to do with forest or whatever they had to pretend they had to made up a case of some sort to put him in jail in the case of karamurza they don't have to pretend anymore they can do whatever they want he's political prisoner and against putin and he said the truth about russian army boom 25 years in jail and 
I lived in USSR and I worked in USSR. Let's talk about state prison, state treason, the treason against the state. In USSR, when I lived there, even in Russia after perestroika, during perestroika, the, there is such an article in the law. But for that, you have to do something. Like you have to be a spy or you have to be the person who has access to the secret information of some sort. And you sign the paper that, yes, you're getting access to the secret information and you promise not to re reveal that information under the, the threat of be put in jail and be arrested and charged for that. And um, when I worked on a, on a big plant in my city, about 7,000 people, which actually I helped to preserve and saved from the dirty hands of the corrupt uh, people who tried to make my, my plant bankrupt, and the 7,000 people would have lost their jobs. Me and my team of economists who came, we made a business plan and we preserved the plant from being closed. But it was just a side contract. Why I was talking about my plant? It's because there were people there who had access to the state secret information. I wasn't. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to move to Canada or even travel abroad. The people who sign depends on the level of the clearance. You're losing your rights. You're losing your rights to travel abroad. You can't just go for vacation in some other country. Many of them, even if they had a, a foreign passport for foreign travels. In Russia, people have two passports. One is internal passport and another one is passport for foreign travels. So in the situation uh, I'm talking about, if you have access to the state uh, secrets, they could just take, even if you manage to receive the passport for foreign travels, they just take it away from you and put it in the safe at the plant or whatever uh, organization you're working. So you can't leave Russia. Without that document, you cannot leave Russia. And these people sign the paper when they agree that if they reveal the information, they're going to be charged. That's how it was in USSR. That's how it was in Russia. It's not anymore. So right now, they can use that, that uh, article of the law about uh, state treason and just grab anybody. Whoever said something, what they don't like. And that's exactly what happened with Mr. Karamurza. According to his lawyer and many other inf sources of information I know, uh, Mr. Karamurza is very ill. And I would hope he wouldn't sit in jail for all 25 years of his life. But with his health, I am not sure how long. Putin's regime will, f will fall. There is no doubt about it. Every dictator regime always falls. But will Mr. Karamurza live long enough to see that? That's remain to be seen, I'm thinking. Another interesting moment I want you to know that the judge of Karamurza case who sentenced him that harsh was biased. Why? Because he was involved in the famous case of Russian lawyer Sergei Magnitsky. Several countries uh, passed the laws, Canada is one of them, against the people who tortured and killed Russian lawyer Sergei Magnitsky. And one of the judges, this judge, was, in, was involved and personally made the decisions to keep Magnitsky in jail and that is why when he didn't get medical treatment Magnitsky died in jail. And Karamurza was making videos and making statements and uh, exposing this judge, making sure that he get in that Magnitsky case list uh, of sanctions in every other countries. And now this is the same judge is judging Karamurza himself. No doubt that Mr. Karamurza get 25 years in jail. I'm not surprised, are you? As I said to you before, there is no law anymore in Russia. There is no constitution. There are no rights of people, period. So it, there is no even reason to pretend for the government that you broke some sort of a law. They can just grab you and throw you in jail. And if there are some Russian people who still don't understand that, and some foreigners or useful idiots or corrupt people 
when they saying, oh, we don't have any rights in here, in Canada, in the United States, somewhere in Europe, there is nothing even close to what happening in dictatorship like Russia or China or any other dictatorship in the world. There is nothing even comparable to what is happening in these countries. And people who delusional, and those trolls who are writing to me, they delusional or wrong. There is no comparison, neither in corruption, the level of corruption, or the level of absence of free freedoms of any kind. Whoever disagrees with me, you're welcome to disagree with me. Okay, write to me and put your money where your mouth is. You would like to immigrate to Russia, I'll help you as much as I can. I will buy you one-way ticket. Good luck to you, go live in there. And now, the situation changed even to worse. This is something for you to compare. This is Vladimir Karamurza, journalist who found guilty by the Russian court in state treason, so-called fakes about a Russian army and participation in undesirable organization. 25 years in jail. This is Alex Sokolov. He got 12.5 years in jail. He killed his daughter-in-law, chopped her body in pieces and wanted to drown it in the river Moika. This is Sergei Garadnichev, the serial killer, Levoberezhny uh, serial killer from the left bank, I guess. This is his nickname. 18 years in jail. In summer 2020, he killed several uh, elderly women, pensioners, and took from their bodies, uh, pulled from their bodies golden jewelry. This is Alexander Semen, 24 years in jail. Several years, this bad guy raped girls. In 2018, he raped and killed five years old girl, and he got 24 years in jail, and Karamurza get 25. This is not the end. Right now, Russia just changed the law about state treason. In Russia, they will give, for the state treason, they will give you life sentence in prison. So if Karamurza would be judged today, he would get life sentence. So at the same time, in three readings, in the same day, basically, State Duma and Russian Parliament approved this law. And also they make harder punishment uh, for the diversions, for some sort of a... When you throw a Molotov cocktail at the recruiting office or something like that, it would be up to 20 years. Even Stalin was giving less. There is no exact statistics, of course, in Russia about uh, the cases of state treason. According to the lawyer of first department, uh, group Evgeny Smirnov, before 2014, to before the war in Ukraine, uh, human rights activists counted about two to four cases a year about state treason. After 2014, so when the war in Ukraine already started, about 15 years in jail. And only in December of last year, 2022, it was more than 20 criminal cases opened in the only one month of the last year. This is where Russia is going. And if Russians still don't understand, like, how do I can tell you in the end of this video what's gonna happen? Russian FSB tried to kill Vladimir Karamurza in the past. And the same killers who was poisoned Navalny uh, tried to kill Karamurza in 2015. But yet he survived and get treated in uh, abroad and get back to Russia, just like Navalny did. Now let's talk about Alexei Navalny. This is a uh, channel uh, Popular Politics. На Алексея Навального завели новое уголовное дело, уже десятое по счету. Его обвиняют в дезорганизации работы исправительного учреждения. Алексей Навальный got charged with another. They opened another case against Навальный while he's in jail. He's already have 10 cases going on against him. Most of them was open when he was in jail. This time he's disorganized in the work in his prison somehow. Это дело результат провокации, о которой адвокат Алексея Вадим Кобзев. This case is a result of provocation with, uh, which was discovered by the lawyer of Mr. Navalny in the past. And he informed the people, uh, human rights activists, but they couldn't prevent it. So 
authorities which were approved by Putin, it seems like uh, people in that jail, they always waiting for personal approval or personal order from Putin to torture Navalny. And they keep putting Navalny together in a teeny tiny cell, like I showed you in what box they hold in Navalny in that Shizou and stuff like that, and in his uh, room in jail. I can't call it a room, it's a cell, it's very tiny, tiny space. With a guy who doesn't wash himself, and he stinks, literally. But nevertheless, they threw him again, together with this guy. And they were expecting Navalny gonna beat him up, but Navalny didn't. All he tried to do, just grab the guy by the collar and walk him to the door. And before that, when Navalny was thrown in jail, he was beat up by the guards. That was first time when they actually used physical force against Navalny. They beat him up, they, and I won't go into details, but they whack him when, in the place where no man would like to be whacked. And this is what's happening. So Russian government now testing. Okay, we did this to Navalny, how that would work. We did that to Navalny. Now they allow themselves to beat him up. And from now on, it's only going to get worse. Beside torture, be, beside the whole bunch of different ways of torture him, but it wasn't literally like physical beating. And now they they doing that as well. And Navalny is not the only one. There are lots of political prisoners now in Russia. По экстремистской статье. Сейчас на ней проходит суд. This is Lilia Chanishova. She was uh, part of the Navalny group. She was arrested and now uh, kind of charged with extremism, which I told you about that article of Russian law, which again doesn't say anything what extremism is. It means anybody can get arrested. And she gets charged in the court, finally. Процесс закрытый, потому что в открытом процессе сразу бы стал очевиден весь абсурд этого обвинения. It's a closed court, because in an open court, the absurdity of that charge would have been obvious and visible to everybody. And another man is, uh, <clears throat> this is Mr. Zdanov. Vadim Astanin, бывший координатор штаба Навального. This is Vadim Astanin, ex-coordinator of uh, one of the Navalny, parts of Navalny group. His sign says, Putin have to leave his post, like, Putin go away, basically, could be removed from power. So he is in jail as well, and so many others. And uh, not just Russians, in a minute I will show you uh, a little bit talk about Evan Gershkovich, but to end the f finishing my, uh, what I want to say about Navalny, like, I have a video with called Political Prisoners, which called Political Prisoners in Russia, Alexei Navalny. What is happening to Russian opposition leader? Uh, I'm not from Navalny group. But if a famous person who actually, uh, in, in whose defense, people speaking all over the world, political leaders talking about him, if he is thrown in jail and sitting in a little box of a cell, and often several times a year putting in Shizo, so-called very tiny, tiny, concrete, dark, cubicle, which right now his team recreated and they're moving it around the Europe to show people in what conditions they hold in Navalny. Even if this person could be thrown in jail for no reason and tortured there and now, now even get beat up there. What's gonna happen to average Joe, or Ivan I would say, who doesn't have support, who nobody knows about? And I studied history. I know history of USSR and I know history of Russia. Many Russians don't. They think in USSR was a good thing. This terrible regime murdered millions of Russian and Soviet people of all over Soviet republics, 15 republics of the USSR, before the World War II. And 27 million during World War II get killed by Nazi Germany or by Stalin regime, by shooting them in the back, like they're doing right now in Ukraine. And if that is happening, they're only going to get worse. I can tell you what's going to happen. FSB 
started to have more and more power in Russia. It's ex-KGB. What happened when the when this kind of organization get that much power? We know what happened. We seen it during Stalin time. Because they have to prove their necessity. And in in the future, with more and more restrictive laws, would be less and less people who will stand up because they would be more and more afraid. Until the whole country will blow up and will be a revolution, maybe. But until then, it would be less and less. How do you think they're going to prove their necessity to Putin? That they're necessary? That they're discovering plots and assassination attempts and everything? They're going to have lists like in Stalin time, like when they will arrest people by just because they've been home. They just go in the apartment building, knock on the doors, and whoever opened the door get arrested, and cases against them will be fabricated. And those people disappeared in Soviet time. Never seen again. Why? Because this is how KGB at the time and cover there or whatever the previous names of that organization was proving to the big chief, to Tsar, their necessity, that they are necessary. Oh boy, oh boy, plots everywhere. Now that uh, got blown up the Tatarsky, the Kremlin uh, blogger criminal. Of course, FSB using it as now cracking down and blaming Navalny team in, in it. It's outrageous. Navalny team is one of the most vegetarian, peaceful people out of any opposition, period. But it will only multiply. It will only be more and more and more. And now I want to tell you a few things about uh, Evan Gershkovich, the reporter of the Wall Street Journal, who was arrested in Russia. And um, the problem is that Russian uh, law doesn't exist not only for Russians, but for foreigners as well. At least Gershkovich was in Russia doing his job. He was a reporter and that's what he was doing. And talking about that, uh, according to New York Times and many other sources, uh, he declares his innocence in a Moscow court, but his detention is upheld. So he's still in jail, in Russian jail. Even uh, the bail was offered, and quite a big one. Court had rejected an offer from Dow Jones to post a 50 million ruble. $600,000 bond on Mr. Gershkovich's behalf. And of course he's innocent. He's just a journalist. Why do I know that? Because I have lived in USSR. I know what it is like. Neither in USSR nor in Russia, FSB or KGB in the past have never left journalists alone. They will watch ev not only every journalist, in the USSR time, they was watching every foreigner who was visiting USSR. I know that because I told you in the past of my videos, KGB agents used to come to my university to recruit students who knows English or any other foreign language to help watching after foreigners who came to Russia as friends to see the new country, which was open during Perestroika. And this was Perestroika time. It was Gorbachev's time. And this is what was happening. So they were watching foreigners because they were considered enemies. And FSB was looking after those chil children, basically watching them to make sure that they're not going in cahoots with foreigners. So everybody knew in USSR and abroad, like in CIA, people who work there are not stupid. They know that every journal is going to be watched. To send a journalist as a spy is plain stupid. And CIA would never do that. So it's just useless. You might as well release somebody in Moscow airport Sheremetyevo with a sign on the forehead. I'm a spy. Please arrest me. So nobody would use journalist as a spy. Period. And well, my warning is to any foreigners, Americans, Canadians, Europeans, do not go to Russia, period. Why? Because like this journalist, but at least he was there because he was doing his job. You will be taken as a hostage to combine 
a pool of hostages Russia can use to exchange their spies or their bad guys who get caught in some other countries. Who they would want to exchange on this journalist. Like that stupid woman, American sports uh, sportswoman, who came to Russia for sport. Then he got arrested. He get, she get, she get arrested. She gets thrown in jail. And she was exchanged for the warlord boot. Just because she decided it's okay to go in the country who is doing that type of stuff, who fight in a war and stuff like that. It's a bad idea. That is why many embassies warning their people, do not go there. Because your country will have to do a whole bunch of things trying to get you out. Because that's what they do. Americans stand up for themselves, for their citizens. That's what President Biden stand up for his citizen, Gershkovich. For American citizen, I mean Gershkovich, not Biden citizen. And that's what Canadians would do. That's what everybody would do. Uh, Russian FSB, former FSB officer Gennady Gutkov, who often come into Navalny's channel Popular Politics, to say about FSB, KGB, how they work, about propaganda and stuff like that. Well, he said, well, you should do the same. It's a war. Like, basically, you should arrest Russian... Uh, oligarchs, their children, their wives, everybody, and refill your pool of people to exchange, which is, that's what he is saying, not me, keep that difference between us. And again, he is saying you don't even have to invent the crimes they committed, because they are committing crimes in your countries. Many of them stole the money from Russia and brought it to your country to hide it in there. Many of them broke several laws already in your country, wherever they are. So you, Americans or Canadians or anybody doesn't have to invent anything to grab these people. They should only investigate them a little bit. They scratch the surface and you'll find out that they are guilty of something. I'm not saying it's a good idea, but it's an idea. That's what he is proposing. This is how KGB is thinking. Even retired ex-KGB, FSB officer, that's what in their mind. And that's exactly what they're doing. That is why he's he got arrested. And no matter what, he's not gonna go and release, be released easily. See, mark my word. Freedom to political prisoners in Russia, freedom to Karamurza, freedom to Navalny, freedom to Lydia Chanesheva, and every, every political prisoner in Russia. Anyways, thank you for watching. Have a good evening. And please help me to spread the truth. Subscribe to my channel and likes and comments. And let me know what you're doing about the situation, what you're thinking about the situation. And have a great evening. See you later.